Hey everyone, this is Carlos. I'm the founder and CEO at Product School. And today I'm here with Stephanie Neal, who's the VP of product at a small Amazon startup called Twitch. Hey, Stephanie. <laughs> hey, Carlos. Good morning. For people who didn't get the joke, Twitch is huge. So <laughs> 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 let's um, start from the very beginning. I, I saw you, you work in different parts of the States and wearing different hats, uh, but how did you actually get that first PM job? Oh, sure. How did I get the first PM job? So um, through through the skin of my teeth, I'll say. Um, I actually graduated with uh, an international relations global business degree from the University of Southern California right into the big recession. <laughs> so uh, there was very little, um, there was very little out there generally um, across tech or other industries. And after um, the US government declined me joining foreign service, which had been my plan since basically birth, uh, coming from a government family, um, I had to find a career to fall back on. And somehow um, I got my foot in the door with a tiny little stealth startup, uh, which no longer exists, of course. And um, they were building basically Facebook apps, like Facebook community apps. And this was this was like Facebook groups before they really productized Facebook groups. Um, and I started doing some PM and UX uh, work under the, like the, the title community manager. Um, I did that for about nine months before I was like, I really have to find something that I can make a living on and, and really, you know, like start to build a career on. Um, Cause you know, it was a tiny startup and you could tell like it wasn't going to last forever. Um, so I interviewed like crazy and with my meager, you know, nine months of experience, you know, um, dithering around with the Facebook apps, I, uh, I, I landed a project coordinator role. Um, it was a summer contract, so three months, uh, contract and I was so grateful to get it. And I just, I, I just threw my all into it and I really, um, you know, showed up and tried to show up as really part of the team, um, where to the point where they couldn't, you know, they couldn't let me go. Um, and it paid off and eventually uh, they converted me to a uh, junior product manager and I was very grateful. Um, and I guess it, it all started there. That's really incredible. And, you know, the other day I mentioned that there are a lot of product managers out there that don't have the title. And your story reminds me of that because even though they call you community manager, you were doing whatever it took just to get things done. And then as a project manager or product manager, doesn't really the title doesn't really define who you are. And I, I kind of identify certain characteristics. You said you got rejected first, you hustled yes. to, to get a yes. And then once you were in, you really worked hard to make sure that they, could, that they couldn't get rid of you. <laughs> yes, literally make yourself indispensable. So many years later, you are the VP of product at Twitch. Uh, so for people who, who don't know, why don't you just a little bit more about, about the company and, and then your product team? Oh, sure. Uh, so Twitch. So um, Twitch is, uh, you know, the world's largest uh, online streaming platform. Um, I like the unofficial mission. Um, so it's, it's a place where people come and find their people um, and build communities. Um, it's, yeah, as you said, it's, it's huge, uh, wildly popular and only becoming more and more, I guess, mainstream and well known. Um, I work primarily in the monetization group on the commerce products, uh, and I lead a team of 13 product managers, um, you know, junior to senior, uh, to junior to principal, I should say. Um, and yeah, our, our mission is to help creators make a living doing what they love. Um, so building sustainable communities. And we're streaming this interview on Twitch, of course. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's I, like I, I, on Twitch. <laughs> and, and I like what you said about communities and I kind of see the connection now because you are building a product for creators that are building their own communities. And yes. this wasn't that obvious back in the day. There were these mainstream media that would kind of send content to an audience that would consume the content and that's pretty much it. Now yeah. you can see the, the, the consumers also being creators. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. There, yeah, there's an inextricable loop. Um, and, and there are like layers to the communities online, um, where some people are pretty laid back and, you know, they're just, they're there for the creator. They're there to, to, to just observe sort of more similar, I guess, to like TV, but then there's just a huge swath of people who are really like leaned in and they want to interact. They want to interact with the creator. They want to interact with each other. 
Um, and there's just it, it, that that builds a real sense of community uh, and belonging and, you know, identity with one another. And that's really special. So with the millions of users that are interacting with the platform on a daily basis, how do you go about making sure that they, they actually feel that connection and they don't, they're not overwhelmed by the amount of people at the same time? Um, well, speaking from the monetization group, um, you know, there's, there's a contribution recognition loop that we, that we build for, right? Um, so, uh, you know, making sure, like basically everyone who uh, contributes on Twitch is doing so because they want to support their creator. Um, that's why they're there. So Twitch is ostensibly a free product, right? Um, so it's really, uh, it's really about, um, you know, making sure that we are uh, connected, like making it, like prioritizing people for that connection, basically, through, through the product. Yeah, I find that really unique. Uh, I haven't seen that many products at that scale that actually do this donation system where you can technically consume as much content as you want for free. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay to get rid of that. You, you, you pay because you really want to help the, the creator. Yeah. And it's, I mean, as I said, it's, it's making the community sustainable um, because otherwise the creators got to go get a day job and they're not going to be streaming. And maybe it gets to the point where they don't have the time or the energy and they're not able to you know, do what they really love, which is, which is streaming and interacting with folks. So, so speaking, that's what we're here to do. Speaking of day jobs, what does your day to day look like? Um, for me, my day to day, um, it's pretty typical. If you're familiar with Connie Kwan's um, Kwan's hierarchy of product needs, I love that. I love I love a good graphic. What can I say? Um, yeah, it, it's, yeah it, it maps to that actually fairly well. Um, I, I basically spend a lot of time in the future thinking about what good looks like. Um, uh, you know, thinking about what is our company mission, what is our big, hairy, audacious goal, and what are the different pathways, product pathways we can take to get there, um, and then how can I de-risk testing out those pathways such that we will ultimately get there. Um, so I guess if I had to boil it down, I mean, I basically wake up every day asking myself, um, am I setting my team up for success? Like, am I pointing them in the right direction? And are we all aligned? And um, do we all know what good looks like? Uh, and am I empowering them to, to learn and, and discover and try things in order to, to actually get us there? Mm -hmm. Well, you use the word empowerment and I, and I love that, especially for people who come from a product background, like ourselves, we tend to, we, we started as builders and it yeah. gets to a point where you can decide if you want to continue as a builder or you want to empower others to build with you. That doesn't make you less of a builder, it's just a, a, a different situation. So how was that transition for you? For me, it was actually surprisingly easy because I applied a lot of product principles to, to how I manage teams. Um, and I also just really love people. I am so inspired and curious and interested in people and helping people. Um, so I think those two things kind of combined was, it just made it a, a very like, a very natural feeling transition. Um, you know, the way I think about empowering my teams today is, you know, am I providing clarity of what good looks like? Do they truly understand it such to the point that we are aligned around it? Because you can understand it theoretically, but then it's really, you know, it breaks down, right? So do they, so is it clear? Do they understand and believe in it? Um, and then are they set up for success? Um, and I think about setting them up for success. I think about what, what scaffolding am I building such that like they are staying on the right track, um, but they have enough space to be creative and innovate and try and fail and win and, you know, all the, everything in between, basically. And are there any particular rituals that you follow to make sure that those three areas are, are covered? And you also know that if something is not getting on track, at least you can, you know, go back to basics and make sure that everyone has the same definition of good. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have quarterly product strategy check-ins where we're not talking, you know, about like, what are you doing specifically? We're talking about, okay, what did you learn? Um, how, how does it change your strategy, if at all? Like, how does it impact the strategy? And like, what are you going to do moving forward? Um, and how are we performing against success metrics? You know, like commonly understood success metrics. Um, those are probably the bigger, the biggest ways. Um, but other than that, it's, you know, like being really engaged, being really involved. Uh, with the team understanding, you know, 
the way they think and, and how they think about approaching the pro like the problems that they're there to solve um, and being there when they need the help, you know, uh, like helping helping shine a light on, you know, their blind spots and, and you yeah, know, watch, watching their six. <laughs> The question about what did you learn, I think, is really powerful because it focuses on the on the wins and it focuses on the opportunity ahead, not so much on like the snapshot of what did you do, and, yes. uh, and I think in lifelong learning and and, yeah. and you do too. You are an active contributor to the Broad School community in many ways as an instructor, as a speaker. So I also need to ask you this question: What are you learning these days? What am I learning these days? Um... Aside from, you know, learning, well, actually, so I just finished uh, 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 working with a cohort of students, um, product managers to be with product through product school, and I actually learned a lot from that because um, I had a roster of, I think, like 16 or 17 students, and they were from all over the world. Um, and that was the first time that I had worked with, you know, product development uh, folks uh, or people adjacent to product development, you know, from like Dubai or, or France. Um, I had, I had been fairly US centric prior to that. So that was fascinating. Um, what I'm actively learning, uh, so I'm actually trying to learn Arabic through Duolingo. <laughs> um, I spoke it as a kid. Uh, I, I think I mentioned I come from a government family um, and we mostly lived in the Middle East. So I was fairly fluent as a kid, but I haven't spoken it in you know, 20 plus years, probably more, you know, 25 plus years. Um, so I'm trying to get back a bit to my roots and. Also, I just love the Duolingo app. So as, as you think about the folks that are starting their careers in product and they want to continue growing, what would you say are some of those key skills? Maybe we can break it down by people who need to get that first PM job, and then we can talk more about the, the people who are in the system already. Yeah. Um, so for people who want to break into product management, it's really about like that i'm guessing you're probably you probably have some kind of experience um and it's really about honing sort of like your value proposition um to the company and and to the for the position right like take take whatever experience you have even if it's just college experience frankly and think about how you can position it such that you know you're squarely focused on that company's mission and you're thinking about what are the objectives that the company has and then what from your background like suits you for helping to drive those outcomes, um, which is you know changing the user behavior uh, to to result in in business results basically. So how to like what value do you bring? Um, and then as you're a little bit further along in product management, um, you know I think empathy for your customers, staying really customer centric, frankly. Um, uh, because it's so easy, especially as PMs, you know, we deal with stakeholders all the time. It's so easy to fall back into like business jargon and talking about, you know, um, dollars per thousand hours watched and things that, you know, their outputs, they're not actual outcomes for your customers. Right. Um, so building and, and, and sustaining that empathy for customers, um, as well as for stakeholders and, and baking that into the product. Um, I think that those are some good skills. And I appreciate those type of um, answers because it's a, a big misconception in terms of what skills or what degree do I need in order to become a product manager? And I'm looking at your LinkedIn profile right now. You've worked in marketing, community management. You mentioned that you also work at your company, your family comes from uh, government uh, jobs. So that is not... Oh, I started, you know, four years of software engineering. Then I did an MBA. Then I worked in Wall Street, and now I'm a VP of product at Twitch. Like there are so many different pathways, and 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 I think it's really encouraging for for the next generation to see that it is possible. Yes, yes, absolutely. Anyone, if you're a person who just really is passionate about getting getting stuff done and having like having impact, like your you your position is in product management because in product management you are accountable. Um, you have ownership of success, you have ownership of failure, you get to work with all types of people, you get to define what good looks like, um, you get to do all of that. Um, and then, you know, you get to, as long as, as long as you love to make things happen and get stuff done, um, you'd be a great product manager. So now that you are on the other side of the table as a hiring manager, and you mentioned there are 13 people on your team, and how do you go about hiring PMs? 
Um, there's a few different things. I mean, obviously relevant experience, like where I am, we do need more, more experienced PMs, um, for the type of work that we have in this specific role. Um, so, you know, relevant background experience, um, uh, focus on outcomes over outputs, um, customer centric, um, you know, um, people who believe in design. Uh, I think there are some product managers out there um, who think it's just, you know, about PM and engineering uh, relationships and that, you know, if you can, if you can work with an engineer to deliver, like you're going to be golden, but design is an incredibly important function that I think often gets overlooked still to this day, uh, although I think it's better than it used to be. Um, so, you know, I look for um, product managers who understand the value of design. Uh, you know, it's not just um, solving the problem right, it's are we solving the right problem? Um, and then, yeah, a lot of cultural factors as well. Like, are they empathetic? Are they self-aware? Um, do they think about the future? You know, are they, do they have a drive to, to own success? Um, sort of like those types of aspects, I think, to PMs. It is hard. What can I say? I think from the outside, <laughs> uh, to be honest, right? A lot of people would say, well, I want to be a product manager because it sounds so cool and you have all these skills and responsibilities, but at the same time, um, you also have to deliver, right? And, and I, 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 I like to make that point so people know that, hey, if you are actually up for the challenge, it's super rewarding. Like I personally, I'm biased, but I love it. And I also want people to recognize that um, if you're looking for a cozy type of job, maybe this is not your best fit. <laughs> no, that's that's very true. You got to have some amount of, um, yeah, hustle and accountability and, you know, passion to make things happen for, for our customers, right? I think, yeah, to sum it up, that's probably it. And, and I agree with your point about design. I think it's um, still to this day uh, overlooked with We've seen, even based on data from, from a lot of our graduates, we see a lot of folks that come from an engineering or technical background. Yeah. We see a lot of people that come from business, whatever that might be, finance, consulting, marketing. We don't see enough folks trying to break into product from design, unfortunately. Oh, exactly. Yeah, I have two designers uh, in my org that I'm like trying to convince to sway into product nation. <laughs> I think it's a superpower. Uh, you have that ability to understand that to feel the user while also being able to connect with other stakeholders. I think back in the day, being a product manager that used to be more technical because like there's a lot of tools that require certain expertise. Now these days, there are a lot of tools that are visual, no code. You can really spend more time on adding value to the user and, and yes. interacting with the user rather than connecting to databases. Yes, yes, 100%. Um, and also I believe like the skills that you're describing, like those can be learned, right? If you have the drive. And so it's really looking for that special drive and that special sort of, yeah, just, it's an internal thing that I feel like if you have it, you can recognize it. Um, so that makes it, makes it easier to find great product people. One of the challenges that I've noticed in product in general is that we have a lot of, um, responsibility. We say we have to lead by, uh, with influence, but sometimes we don't have the authority. So in, in your case, I don't know how the org chart is set up, but like, how do you go about making sure that your, your voice is heard? Um, well, so Twitch is a pretty product led company. So I don't have a, I don't, I don't really have any problems. I think for, for my function being heard either through myself or, or my team um, or partner product teams or PM teams, I should say. Um, but I will say, you know, in government, <laughs> it was much harder. Um, in government, they, they very much had, um, you know, product managers who were really doing project work, et cetera. And then they had program managers who, you know, had no technical experience. So it was much harder to come in. And I think, you know, being um, like a diplomat's daughter, I sort of learned uh, the art of helping people see a shared vision and and understand like shared objectives, seeing seeing the overlap in the Venn diagram to sort of mobilize people to work together. Um, and so, yeah, so it is, it is influence. It is, you know, uh, working without authority. And it's, it's, a, it's definitely a skill to learn and it's learnable, um, but it's really about helping people, helping get people aligned uh, by seeing, by seeing how they'll get what they want out of it 
if that makes sense. <laughs> Totally, and, and what you just said about uh, being a diplomat's daughter. <laughs> so I to say, and uh, being a, a PM in a way feels like being a diplomat, but I want to validate that with someone who's actually seen <laughs> a diplomat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I definitely think that gave me a leg up. Um, and sometimes in my, you know, sometimes I, I think to myself, like, have I just been a product manager my whole life? <laughs> like, just every little thing that I'm doing, I'm always sort of like managing with the, with the core principles. Yeah, and and um, now that you are in, in, under the Amazon umbrella, I can imagine that Twitch is pretty independent, but, but still like there are certain philosophy principles that we share. And one of them that I'm very curious about is how do you go about building your own internal products like tools versus okay. buying? Traditionally, we've seen companies like Google or Amazon trying to kind of do their own internal tooling. And yeah. we see a lot of smaller startups also, you know, relying on third party apps. Yeah, no, definitely. So um, we rely mostly on G Suite and like Atlassian, I would say, um, and Figma. <laughs> um, but I know, you know, we do use Chime like when we have to, when we have to like talk to other Amazon folks and stuff like that. But, you know, otherwise we're, we're pretty much uh, more, we're more akin to that like startup mode that you that you talked about uh, rather than sort of the corporate, um, you know, dog fooding. <laughs> that is so awesome. I wasn't expecting uh, that answer, but I... I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, as, as you think about it, you said you, you try to spend a lot of time thinking about the future and you want your team to think about the future as well. What does the future look like for Twitch? Oh, good question. Um, so I like to think a lot about how community interaction is going to change, um, and how, you know, how it can become more interactive and more experiential, um, and like less of a flat experience. Um, I also like to think about the creator ec economy and how that is really going to change. I think that's, you know, creators are sort of like the, the next big piece in the gig economy. And, um, you know, I think creators are going to have more and more control over their audience, over their monetization options. Um, and, and I think we just need to lean into that and see, see how Twitch can, can help provide, um, you know, what creators need, to, you know, five, 10 years from now. It's a huge movement. Um, I'm part of it as well. And we've seen so many people. And I think in a way, it's democratizing access to opportunity. We yeah. see a lot of people who have been interviewing for a job. And now, well, that's, an op well, that's a valid option. You can also become your own PM, right? You can build an audience. You, can, you don't even need to build from scratch. Like you can rely on a third-party tool yeah. and, and, and focus directly in accessing the consumer. Yes. Yes. But I will say there's something special. Um, you know, creators are entertainers. So there is something special there that I feel like you know, people, people need, um, even if you get on stream and just talk about product management, that's cool too, but you have to have, you have to be engaging. I know. And, and I was looking at those stats, um, in the, in the gaming industry, which I'm, I'm, I know it's a huge vertical for, for Twitch, how there is these uh, players who focus on winning prices and they're really good at playing, but they might not be the best entertainers. And then you have yes. this other breed of creators who are really good at entertaining the audience, even though they might not be the best players. And actually yeah. the entertainers are the ones also making money and getting bigger audiences. Yes. Yeah, because that's that's more the community, sense of community. I mean, definitely, you know, a large swath of our viewers are still really interested in, in just like the play of the game. Um, so, so sort of the former you were talking about, but the latter, that's really, that's, that's the magic of Twitch, right? We, we help those people build, find, find their people um, and build their communities um, and, and have fun together. You mentioned how being entertaining is, is important, but what is, I'm sure there are a lot of people listening to you thinking, you know, I don't know, this sounds interesting. Um, what would be like a good way for someone to, to get started? Um, I guess, you know, kind of going back to one of your earlier questions, like know, know what you want to provide, like know what you want to offer the like people, right? Um, like what's special about you that you can bring? Um, I would also say, you know, don't take it too lightly. Uh, you know, our streamers, it's hard work. It's, it's, it's long hours of streaming. It's tough. It's, it's a grind to really get started. 
Um, but once you start to make traction, it can be really, really special and really magical. And you mentioned that now these platforms are becoming more flexible to allow the creator to take, take the audience with them. And we've seen so many ways you can you can build community and right like live streaming, connecting with them via video is one. We've seen online education. We've seen yeah. traditional social media, text, whatever that might be. Um, how do you think about that? The creator is the do you envision a situation where the creator has to be in multiple platforms. Uh, or is there going to be a moment where the creator can use a platform and and communicate with the audience in different formats? I think that's a possibility. Um, I also think that there's, you know, that right now there's different tools to meet different needs that not all creators have. Um, you know, obviously Twitch is here to meet the most the most you know um, the most necessary needs of the creators. So, uh, you know, the way we think about it is, you know, let's build the best service possible um, for our creators to, to continue coming back and continue building their communities with us. Um, but yeah, I think at least right now, um, I think that there is there that it is complementary, and we should just make it easy. Um, and also just understand that, you know, there are different services to meet different aspects of needs um, for different creators. I always like to wrap up interviews with uh, a question about uh, advice to your younger self, oh. because I, I think a lot of people might be in a situation where they're at crossroads, they're kind of considering if maybe starting a, a, a channel is the right way, or maybe applying for a product management job. Like yeah. that, you know, that person that was getting that first community manager job, what would yeah. you say based on everything that you know today? Oh, uh, the, probably the best advice I wish I had had when I was younger, which now I, I, you know, this is, this is, this is core to how I manage people as well, um, is work backward from what you want as far out as you can see. Like, can you, can you read your obituary or, or like, what, like you're having your retirement party. Like, what are people saying? What are the accomplishments? Like, what do you want to hear about you? What are the values you displayed? What, what are the things you accomplished? Like who, you know, What's the community you built? Um, and then use that to help guide the decisions that you're making day to day. Because especially as you start to, you know, get further in your career, you will get more and more opportunities. And if you don't have that kind of guard, guiding North Star, it's hard to know which opportunities are the right ones or which ones, you know, present the right type of the right type of risk for you, right? Um, so work backwards from as far as you can see. Um, Sounds to me like be a PM of your, of your own life. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time, Stephanie. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Carlos. It was great speaking with you.